Oh, man. I cannot wait to kick back with Drew and Dustin and talk about some movies that scared us as kids. Have you met Drew yet, Lobo? I think you'd really like him. Yeah. About that. Wait. What did you do? Well, it was about three days ago. Your pal Drewski was showing me some of the healing properties of the ganja plant. <laughs> God damn, so that's why they call you Drewby Dooby Movie. Holy shit, man. I'm starving. Ugh. I'm going to raid the fridge for some snacks. Oh, shit. My, my bad, man. My bad. Damn, I got the bong water all over you. <laughs> uh, Drew, you feeling all right? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Far out, man. So, you turned Drew into a gremlin. More or less. Damn it, Lobo. Now, who's going to replace him for the show? You know, you are zero for two with the Masters of Matinee. What's next, hmm? Well. Well, what? You know why you have a new full-fledged member coming to Masters of Matinee next Blues Day Tuesday? I mean, spoiler alert, but yeah. What about it? Well, uh, they sort of suck now. They suck? Blood. They suck blood. They suck. I, I just, you know what? That's a conversation for next week. Ladies and germs, welcome to this week's episode of Masters of Matinee Theater of Terror. We're joined by Drew and Nerdy Dustin for a chat about movies that freaked you out as a kid. This is where I'd normally say something mean and snarky, but uh, I liked this episode. I think I might be coming around to these guys. Well, coming from someone who's been holding me hostage for three weeks, that means a lot. Thanks, Lobo. Don't get too gushy on me, man. Titch, or I'll bite your eyeballs out. Uh, silence your cell phones and... Uh, oh, hell. Enjoy the show. All right, I'm joined with uh, Drew and Nerdy Dustin. Boys. I need to know what is your biggest fear, or at least what was your fear as a child? Drew, what scared you the most as a child? Dude, I mean, honestly, probably insects. I hated, I hated spiders in general, uh, dude, and it was just, uh, ugh, they give me the heebie-jeebies. And I would say uh, the demonic stuff got me a lot when I was a kid. Like, when I saw The Exorcist for the first time, I scared the living hell out of me. Word, word. I bet I bet uh, James and the Giant Peach was a no-go for you then, huh? It was, no, it was scary. It was, I thought it was a <laughs> scary movie. I didn't know it was a ch child's movie. <laughs> what about you, Dustin? Uh, yeah, when I was a kid, what scared me? Uh, uh, my stepfather. <laughs> that, we, yeah, we laugh at that yeah, but he's probably dead serious <laughs> <laughs> wait why am i laughing I'm, I'm pretty serious um <laughs> uh, i mean yeah my step my monstrous husband is gonna show me uh no uh, oh can we swear on your podcast fuck yeah oh yeah okay cool um I, no i really nothing like maybe it's because i was uh desensitized as a child and i grew up watching poltergeist and the exorcist and godzilla and it and like from the age of like four to well till now so uh nothing's really scared me um i mean i that's not true that's not true unsolved mysteries right yeah it scared the hell out of me uh like a, like uh, being abducted by aliens that that yeah. scared me there you go that that's yeah. yeah i never wanted that to happen no so now in 2023 when it's looking like uh you know alien invasion is is pretty imminent or does that still scare you or are you more like oh Whoa. no no i've got um a legitimate sign uh made in my bedroom right now uh that's next to my bed so when it happens i can go outside and hold it up and it says for the love of everything please take me 
<laughs> Feelings have changed of that nature. You're, you're ready to go. <laughs> I won't. I won't even fight you. I'll just just take me. Just, I'll pay you to take me. <laughs> what it, like even if it means like getting your anal cavity probed? Are you still? Or are you just I like? Will, I will. I will already have my pants down and and uh, <laughs> You're like it wouldn't be the wor- wouldn't be yeah. the worst way I've been <laughs> fucked. <laughs> we'll just we'll just get it over with and we'll move on with our days. You know. <laughs> you see, this is the thing though. It's like I've got okay. So the aliens are there. I've got the probe in my hand. My pants are down, and I'm looking at them. And then I look back, and I'm like, okay, do I go with the aliens and get probed, or do I go back and pay my taxes? <laughs> yeah, I'll go with the aliens. I'll go with the aliens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, <laughs> do, do I want to go work another 40 hour work week? No, no, take no, me, take no, me, bro. Please. Please. <laughs> I mean, by that logic, you could just go sell your body on the streets of Charleston and kind of get the same outcome, huh? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a feeling that if if beings can get to us from across space, that their laboratories or where they'd be probing me would be the cleanest thing you would ever imagine. Like I wouldn't have to worry about getting anything from the probe. So that is very that. true. That's that is fair. very true. Every time you see a probing scene, everything is sterile. Everything yeah, is exactly. is clean and ready to go. So no worries there. Yeah, I mean, but to be fair, I mean, I'd kind of be like, just just fucking kill me now. I don't care. AIDS, whatever. Just 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 kill me. <laughs> just just let us just, just get it over with. Um, I think that when I was a kid, the biggest fucking thing that ever scared the shit out of me was Reagan and the exorcist. I saw that movie Mm -hmm. way too young. I didn't have, I didn't have any fears at all. It's, it's funny right now as a grown adult, I'm terrified of bees and spiders. Uh, they're both nopes. There's one in my house that my house is now that bees house. So, uh, but, but when I was a kid, uh, you know, I saw it uh, in this, the claymation spider scene and it freaked me out a little bit. I think that was maybe the turning point that turned me off of spiders. But before that, I would fucking pick them up and play with them and shit all the time. But but yeah, I think the biggest thing was probably was probably Reagan turning her head in circles and saying your mother sucks cocks in hell that was that was as a little christian boy not a catholic boy but just a methodist christian boy that was awful to see at seven years old it it, it burns it burns it in your head pretty uh, pretty well um it, it's uh it's pretty it's pretty jarring how drew how old were you when you saw the exorcist for the first time probably like seven I think Eight. that's that's a running theme. You said you were like three, right, Dustin? Yeah, three, four in that range. Yeah, it's one. It's one of the first horror movies I ever saw. Mm-hmm. That and it, it, it did that that scene in it where he's coming from the shower drain. I was terrified to take a shower for a couple of days after I saw that. I was like standing as far as I could from the drain and still showering. I was like, "Fuck, get me out of here, bro." <laughs> So, nothing, yeah. nothing from it freaked me out. Uh, if anything, I thought it was hilarious, especially Tim Curry's one-liners. But, um, mm. you know, uh, Exorcist also didn't really freak me out all that much. But uh, what freaked me out though was the second Poltergeist, the old guy. Mm. He, his presence freaked me the hell out, uh, especially mm-hmm. when he's at the door. Uh, I, I just, yeah, they, they freaked me out. That freaked me out. <laughs> Sometimes the presence alone can just be enough. It's like, who? Oh. I have only seen the first Poltergeist and I did not like it. I saw it when I was a kid and I didn't like it. Uh, not cause it scared me. I just thought it was boring. Um, and then I knew this is a hot take cause it's a very beloved film. Um, but then when it came out on 4k, my wife wanted to get it so bad, wanted to watch it with me. And I was like, I don't like that movie. I don't want it. So she bought it one day. Cause I've, I told her my, my number one rule is like, if you ever want me to watch a movie, you got to buy it for me on physical media. If we own it, I'll watch it. Like that, that's my rule. But so she, she, she bought it for me and I rewatched it and I was like, yeah, this is just as boring as I remember. I I think it's, I, I I don't know. I like Spielberg, but I don't like that movie. 
So I haven't seen Poltergeist 2, so I don't have a frame of reference for the, the creepy old man you're, you're speaking of. Well, let's hope that you don't ask us what our favorite horror movies are. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what would uh, what would your favorite horror movie be there, Dustin? Uh, well, JT just bashed it to hell, so <laughs> there's that. There's that. Uh, the first Poltergeist, which is described uh, t- was just described to me as boring, <laughs> is a cinemas- cinem- cinematic masterpiece in every way. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the first, the first Poltergeist is a cinemassacre to my mind. Ugh. Huh. <laughs> not uh not not quite sure how it's boring but uh film is subjective right that you right can have your right opinion, uh you know your, your opinion's wrong but you can have your opinion. <laughs> it's for sure that's the thing that's why we love film you can <laughs> <laughs> you know i i get that a lot though i have some hot takes with horror i don't like nightmare on elm street either i i've never like Freddy Krueger or Nightmare on Elm Street. He doesn't do it for you? I, no. I, well, I, I think I know what it is. You don't like good movies. Well, okay, so here's the thing. When I watch a horror movie, specifically a slasher film, I'm the kind of guy that roots for the bad guy. I want Jason to kill every last camper. I want Michael to destroy Laurie Strode's throat, even though we all know that that never happens. RIP my boy, Michael. Um, I mean, he's going to come back obviously, but uh, like never dead, <laughs> never dead ever. Um, but it's just really hard to get behind a pedophile. You know, that's why I can't get with Freddy Krueger. That's yeah. That's yeah. He's the true um, villain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like I just I w- I want Nancy to to live <laughs> in nightmare because I it's, So it's while growing up watching that film, like I didn't really see I knew he murdered and tortured children as a kid. I didn't realize what he actually was, right? Until I was an adult. Yeah. Um and then I learned that, oh wow, he wasn't just torturing like he was a pedophile. Um mm-hmm. Uh, so it's yeah it does des- does des- definitely change how i look at those films um for sure uh, but uh other than that though uh i'm also not a huge fan of the um like the one liners and shit the welcome to my world bitch type thing i uh, i just don't feel like when you have a character as dark as freddy i don't feel like the comedy mixes in well with it it just to me i mean i understand that it's very beloved and a lot of people do love that and it's the same kind of you know one line stupid humor that you find in like evil dead 2 and stuff you know so so i i enjoy evil dead and i get you so i get that in a way but it's just i don't know it's just not for me yeah i feel like that's why horror is really cool though i mean there's so many sub genres of horror and uh what that can play into and what could, what kind of fear that can strike into a person so it's fun to go all down all those different paths and see what you like and what you don't like and it's uh hor- horror's a fun it's a it's a good time it's a it, it'll it'll uh lead you to a path that you didn't really think you could be into i think at least for me and the cool thing about slashers too is uh, there's there really is a different slasher for everyone, right? If you like the comedy, you know you've got that. If you like the mm-hmm. stone cold killer that doesn't say anything, you got that. Uh, if you like the supernatural uh, demon slasher, you got that. Um, uh, I mean, it's just a little bit of everything, and, and I, that's why I love, you know, like you know, Freddy's not for 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 JT, but he's for other people, and. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like my favorite uh slasher i mean well i i don't i i do consider the 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 uh hellraiser movie slashers in a way but um cuz pinhead's up there with those guys but pinhead's my favorite and he's mm-hmm. not he's not really going around with a chainsaw or a knife right i mean <laughs> it's not no, his yeah. ordeal but but he's yeah. still my favorite you know but he's not you know he's a lot of people don't like him either because he's not the typical slasher you know mm-hmm. with the with the knife and the one line. Well, he does have some one liners, but um so yeah, there's you know, there's that. You must hate Chucky, JT. If you don't I, like Freddy, there's no way you like Chucky. I fucking hate Chucky. I I <laughs> can't can't fucking stand that little bastard. Come on. Chucky's the gang of one liners. Yeah. Comedy. No, it's fucking. like half the movie almost. 
<laughs> well, they literally took his franchise into like a full comedic. Like those last couple, not the the mm-hmm. newer ones, but like Bride mm-hmm. and Chucky, See the Chucky. Those are those are straight up horror comedies. Yeah, you, you Bri- wanna... I think Bride is Bride is really funny. Honestly, you want to know what I think ruined uh, some of these movies for me. When I was a kid, my mom was very, very fucking weird, right? So I was allowed to watch Friday the 13th, and I was allowed to watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but I wasn't allowed to watch Child's Play. And uh, Child's Play, I grew up in that age where it was like Bride of Chucky and Seed of Chucky, like the, you know, the 2000s, late 90s, 2000s Chucky, and like my generation loved that shit we were i mean we were kids i know those are objectively more some more of the weaker chucky films but like the uh my going to school and everything everybody always talked about it and everything and they their parents were taken into it but my mom wouldn't let me watch it um i don't think that she wouldn't let me watch it because she thought it was inappropriate i think she just didn't want to sit through the theater and watch it <laughs> or or, sit, <laughs> or listen yeah. to it on television um, so when I grew up more and I was into my teenage years and I finally saw those movies and I was already past the point where Chucky could scare me, uh, I, I think it just didn't hit me. Um, I, I felt like it just made it, I just felt like I mean, it was kind of boring and then stupid, you know, I, I just, uh, not, not my thing, not my thing. I don't have anything necessarily against Chucky, especially like, I don't, I, I have, I have moral objections against liking Freddy Krueger because I I know a lot of people that like obsess over Freddy Krueger. And I have like a moral objection to that because it's just so crazy to me that like you would, you know, be in love, be in love with a pedophile like that. But then, but then there's also people that obsess over Chucky and I can get that to a a better extent than someone like Freddy for sure. I I can understand people loving the character of, uh, of of Freddy Krueger you don't ever get the pedophile Freddy Krueger, right? He's dead right away. We're getting the uh, nightmare demon Freddy Krueger who's killing teenagers and adults. He's not going after children. So uh, most people, even people I've talked to today, you know, when I explain to them that, you know, Freddy Krueger is a, is a pedophile, uh, they're like, what? Where does that happen? So I, I get that, you know. I, I feel like I, I uh, as a kid, missed a lot of these, like, cultural horror movies because I was a little scary cat, and I didn't watch a lot of scary movies. So when I did, I thought they were, like, really scary. Like, to the point where I thought, like, Van Helsing was scary. Like, when I was a child, I was like, dude, Van Helsing was terrifying. And someone was like, no, it's not. What are you talking about? So I had to like in my teenage years, I went back and watched all the like the old classic horror movies and it was a fucking blast. And I kind of was upset that I was hidden away from all of this stuff when I was a kid. But I was a scaredy cat, man. I, I feel like I watched uh, I watched uh, Hills Have Eyes with my sister and I, I didn't watch another horror movie for like another like three years because i was just done i was like i can't do it i don't know what it is but i'm a little scary boy and i'm not gonna do this anymore so i i took it i just stopped until i was like a teenager and started again and it was a blast um i cannot stand to be honest with you and this is a hot take I don't care for most of the Halloween franchise and uh four five six i none of those i do i care for I have not seen four or five or six. I've only seen the first one, second one, and the Rob Zombie one. So I ha- I have not totally, de- just totally delved into the Halloween franchise quite yet. When I was a kid, though, I used to love watching the Halloween four and five because it. Whenever I would go out trick or treating, and I would come back home, Halloween four was usually just starting. And so as a kid, and that was my biggest exposure to the Halloween franchise, even nowadays, I just love watching them. And I remember I had the hugest crush on Danielle Harris. uh, And and I just, I loved those movies, Um, but they didn't scare me. So another thing that I used to love watching when I was a kid 
were like the made for TV, like Disney Channel movies that were around Halloween oh. or Nickelodeon and stuff. Yeah. Um, I, Drew, I think that your and I's generation is probably going to match up with the kinds of movies that we watched. Uh, Dustin is from the the elder millennial tribe. So I, I'm I know what I liked. I know I liked Phantom of the Megaplex. Uh, yeah. Now you see me. Um, my uh, let's see. I think it was my babysitter is a vampire. And the um, the Halloween Town movies. Oh yeah, the Holland, uh, the Halloween Town movies were always a must when I was a kid. Oh yeah, they're still a must. They're they're every year for me. What about you, Dustin? Did, did I mean I know that those are all like you were probably a teenager by the time Halloween hit, right? Because you were born in what eighty six. So yeah, we, um, let's see. I I I I did I do I did watch all those movies, but I mean I also watched, um, you know the Disney original movies up until I, mean, I was in college. Um, I don't what year did? I believe Halloween Town one came out in ninety nine. Made like I believe that's ninety eight. Halloween Town, 98. Halloween Town 98. came out ninety eight, so I would have been what uh twelve at the time. So. Ooh. Um, yeah, I, I definitely watched those, uh, um, growing up for sure. Um, I, I, now I do really, really enjoy the first Halloween town. I still watch it to this day. Mm -hmm. Uh, the rest of them I could care less about, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh and, and most of those Disney Channel original movies, they didn't hold up for me, uh, you know, um, but that one definitely. Uh, the the ones you mentioned are totally uh, the ones I watched as well. But there's there's another one called uh, the uh, Little Vampire that I loved watching with a uh, Jonathan Jonathan Litlicky in it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. loved that one. And then um, Casper, we watched Casper a lot as a family. Casper was solid. And then the the Haunted Mansion that is not the remake, but the one with uh, Eddie Murphy, good, good old Eddie Murphy. I enjoyed it, but that's one of like the most poorly rated movies on Rotten Tomatoes like ever. It's like at a 14 percent or something. But I always love watching that. And I like that it's like shot through the kid's eyes. It's so when you are a kid, you kind of like relate more to the movie and stuff. So, yeah, those were all those were all locks for me ever every Halloween and then eventually Monster House. I watch Monster House like to this day. I think Monster House is an amazing animated movie. I think that um on the subject of Haunted Mansion, I, I think that it gets way too much crap way more crap than it deserves. I have such a special place in my heart. Although I am biased. Haunted Mansion is one of the first movies that I remember seeing in theaters. Like oh, really? I, I have cool. very vivid memories of seeing that film in theaters. Um, but yeah, Little Vampire is Dustin. Have you ever seen Little Vampire? I have. Yes. That movie is so underrated, in my opinion. Nobody ever talks about it anymore. I'm glad you brought that up, Drew. Like, I love me a good vampire flick. Oh yeah, uh, it's 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 a vampire wholesome family. Like, it, yeah. And they're vegetarian they're vampires. Yeah, they're, they're, they're nice. <laughs> they're, they're vegetarian vampires feasting on cow's blood instead of humans. Like it's they're trying it's their great. best. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that movie, man. Um Dustin, when you were like a little kid, you know, what what kind of like spooky, uh, creepy movies or shows did they play around Halloween? Like we all, I know we all grew up like in like ABC Family, Thirteen Nights of Halloween, and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Like I know we all remember oh, wow. that vividly. Yeah, that, that's that's early two thousand stuff. Uh, so, okay, so it, in the early nineties, um, it was mostly uh, you're talking. Are you afraid of the dark? Goosebumps. Mm, goosebumps. Um, weren't really. I mean, like there, there weren't a lot. Like the Disney original movies, there was there really weren't things like that um, back in those. I mean, you got to remember though, in the eighties uh, and and seventies and early early nineties. I mean, mo a lot of horror movies that are rated R now were rated PG, so we were watching those. Uh, that <laughs> I mean, is but, true. I always forget about um, that. Now, are you afraid of the dark? That was the biggest. That came out in nineteen ninety. That's when the they premiered that show. Um, 
and then the Goosebumps came out in '95. Um, but those those were the two shows that we grew up uh, watching that were horror based. I mean, are you afraid of the dark? I mean, that was some terrifying shit. Um, yeah. I've gone it's... back here recently and I've watched episodes of it and it still holds up. And a lot of those, uh, I, <laughs> we were, I mean, I was probably five at the time, like for six, seven. And, and these are stuff that would scare me as a teenager. Right. It's yeah. Um, especially but, uh, you... tower of terror mass, uh, the, the haunted oh, yeah. mass. These are, yeah, these were terrifying. I mean, it's we're definitely not really made for little kids. Um, yeah, man, the, you said and you you said the Are You Afraid of the Dark holds up? I haven't re I haven't gone back and watched that. Oh yeah, ever. Midnight Society. They still hold up. They still hold up. I mean, oh, obviously man. the production quality is shit because it's <laughs> yeah. Really it, but the stories, the acting, it still holds up. It's still and the and the theme and the the opening theme is still the scariest thing around. I mean. The kids Man. laughing and and the, yeah. it's, oh, it's so creepy. The playground swing, it's so creepy. Um, yeah, I had to. I, uh, I had to go back because I I wa- I remember watching Are You Afraid of the Dark when I was a kid, but I, I I haven't seen it since I was a kid. So I had to go back and rewatch the intro because Dustin was telling me about this off pod about how it still is super creepy and i have to agree man that like doll thing that's there like little the little dummy thing and then like you said the kids laughing oh my god since since uh chills man since chills now all the tv shows back in the day too would do halloween specials and some of those would be like i was talking i was telling jt uh if anybody remembers the the show uh salute your shorts right uh, they had these these Halloween episodes with um, uh, this uh, Zeke the the plumber, and um, he he was freaky, right? He was so freaky. I still remember him to this day, and that was like thirty years ago. Um, so it's uh, so we did have things like that. Like uh, Simpsons had their uh, you know Halloween uh, stuff. Yeah, the so Treehouse of Horror. Yeah, so there was quite a bit of horror stuff for kids back in the day, um, but just not not as much as there is now. Um, but yeah, there's. So this is a little bit off subject, but but who do you think between like the big three, Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, overall had the best spooky Halloween time uh, programming? On Nickelodeon, hands down. Yeah, I feel like Nickelodeon had more of like a serious tone to their like movies. Yeah. Like even though like they were made for kids, they were still pretty scary and pretty serious. But I feel like Disney kind of just went for the more like frilly, yeah. whimsical Halloween vibe than Nickelodeon. So I would have to agree. I feel like Nickelodeon was a little better in quality. End of the day, when you're talking, uh, not now, but when you're talking late 80s early 90s even up until the early 2000s nickelodeon was the dominant studio hands down they they definitely had and not just horror related everything i just think they had way better quality um you know but also that's all they were right they they could all they they put all their time energy and budget into their programming whereas disney didn't have just you know they had the parks, the movies, the yeah, you know, that's so, true. Um, for sure. And Cartoon Network, I don't, I mean, they had like the, their cartoons would have Halloween specials, right? They yeah, mm-hmm. well, but then, freaky. but then on the other end of that, you had on Cartoon Network, you had programming that was spooky all the time. You had Courage, you had, um, yeah. you had Grim that's Adventures true. of Billy and Mandy, yeah. yeah I was, yeah, I was gonna say they usually the for Adventures of Billy and Mandy they would usually do like a Halloween episode here and there and those were always a lot of fun. Courage the Cowardly Dog is scary. I, I don't care what you say. Like <laughs> going back and watching that now, it's like a bad trip inside of a bad trip, man. It just gets weirder and weirder. I'm like, <laughs> who? What children are watching this? Why are they watching this? What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude, I I used to love those old '90s, early 2000s Cartoon Network shows, man. Um, everything from from Billy and Mandy to Foster's Home, Ed, Ed and Eddie. The their 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 oh, cartoon yeah. programming was was a chef's kiss. Mm-hmm. For sure, especially Ed, Ed and Eddie is my favorite. 
Yeah. Um, now Disney, Disney had you know the, well before the original movies, they had like their their short to this day, and you can, they just actually put it back on Disney Plus. Uh, the old like skeleton silent film. Yeah. Um, you know th- those were pretty freaky as a child for sure. I remember watching those as a kid and being pretty scared of those. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've I've always kind of seen that. Nickelodeon has been like the the middle child in a way. Cartoon Network has always been the best at doing the um at, at doing the cartoons and then Disney Channel and this is the, I mean I understand this is very opinionated like and, and I know that you guys are going to disagree. I preferred Disney Channel's live programming over Nickelodeon's live programming f- for the for my childhood. Now before me um or at the tail beginning of me um there was you know keenan and cal and all that and the amanda show and stuff like that and of course i i love that stuff and i probably like that stuff more than anything disney channels ever made but then when you're talking about especially when you're talking about like holiday featured movies and stuff even the major tv ones i just got to give it to disney channel man phantom and the megaplex one of the best like made for TV Halloween specials ever, in my opinion. And I think that's Nickelodeon, my guy. No, it's not. It's Disney. Really? It's Disney. Uh, it's really? it's on it's Disney on Disney sure. Plus. It's on Disney Plus. Nick- okay. Nickelodeon didn't really do movies though. They just I guess that's true, their, yeah. Their shows. Um so you're yes, uh early nineties, late eighties. Nickelodeon's program dominated all the networks. They just had the best stuff. Uh, now you're talking late '90s, early 2000s. Yeah, Disney found its stride. It, it's you know it had Lizzie McGuire, it had even Stevens. It, it started to find its place. And by then too, Nickelodeon was starting to you know die down. The, they closed the studio down. Uh, a lot of their programming had had shifted to more of the uh, Nick Jr. stuff. Um, they had a hit with SpongeBob, so they started focusing on that a lot more, and um, they got rid of all the zany, uh, like adult cartoons like Rocco's Modern Life, Cat Dog, Hey Arnold, things like that started to die off. And then Disney acquired some of those cartoons, like Doug yeah, Doug, you're right. Um, so, yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it, it definitely. I think it was Nickelodeon started it. They they were the powerhouse, and then um, then yeah, Disney took over and 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 just crushed Nickelodeon to. Uh, it's, I mean, it's still around, but not no near near what it was. Mm. Um, I find PBS to be the 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 redheaded stepchild that <laughs> like, was just there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're, you're, you're watching. You're watching. You're watching Doug <laughs> and Cat Dog and. And Dexter's Lab, oh, and then over PBS shit. got Arthur. <laughs> yeah, yeah <dude. laughs> Arthur. Uh, uh, where is where is Carmen San Diego Ghost Rider? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Mm. They had Lamb, or not? Well, they had Lamb but they had Wishbone, and I really enjoyed Wishbone. That was a good one. When we're talking about movies that we saw as kids, what is one thing? Like, what is the first time you remember? a movie like making you wince and look away and having to cover your eyes. Like did that, did those movies do that to you when you were three years old, Dustin? Like, or were you able to comprehend what was even happening? Oh no, no. Um, well, when I was very young, I just really, I don't think I really comprehend. And then, you know, I kept being told that this isn't real. It's just a movie. And I comprehended that pretty quick and it just didn't scare me. I I, honestly, I thought most of it was just, it was just funny and and interesting and, and stuff like that. But there's only been one movie to ever scare me um, and to where I left the theater and I, I had, I pissed my pants almost. It was so terrifying. And that was the Blair Witch Project. Now I know what you're saying. Ooh. I know what you're saying. That what? I just watched that. The movie is the worst thing ever made. It, it is. It doesn't hold up. It's a, it's a terrible movie. But in 1999, when that came out, uh, it was promoted as being real. Right. Um, yes. Yeah. Dude, it was a, the marketing behind that movie is insane. I insane. mean, it's, actually, the movie started off with the marketing. The movie hadn't even been made. They started with the marketing. Uh, that was the the whole the whole story and how that movie came to be was the marketing. They they hired a marketing firm to to, to start that movie. Um, 
and we Crazy. didn't have Google wasn't what it is today. We, I mean, we had yeah, we had internet, but not like it is now. So you couldn't just yeah. go home and 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 look all this up. And if you did look it up, you it looked real. Uh, so that so that at the end of the day is the only thing to ever freak me out because I thought it was real. I thought it was this all was, real. Yeah, there was a real witch. These it's found footage. I mean, there. shit. Exactly. So besides that, no, nothing has ever ever freaked me out. And I think honestly, it is because I was shown that stuff at a very young age um and i was mostly shown that stuff so my uh, my mom had me in high school right so um very young mother her sisters helped raise me they're also very young so they're not gonna sit here and watch mr rogers neighborhood right they're gonna watch godzilla (laughs) (laughs) so i did not later on right when i got to be like six seven ten um then i started getting into the mr rogers the reboot the uh wishbone lamb shop stuff but uh, barney for a second um but hmm. yeah no i just just never scared me except for are you afraid of the dark that also scared me a lot i i just think that yeah. blair blair witch is an interesting thing because it was such a cultural phenomenon you know oh, yeah because we all it, thought it was real <laughs> well yeah, and that's it, just but, insane but look at look at it, Blair Witch as the genesis for what we have now in shows like Ghost Hunters or Ghost Adventures. You know, without Blair Witch, without Blair Witch, Zach Baggins don't have a job. You know, oh. so I mean, it's it's yeah. it's super interesting. Uh, Drew, what about you? What what's something from your childhood that like you know? I mean, I was a little scaredy cat, so everything what didn't make me. <laughs> yeah, what didn't make me? Um, I mean, I'm trying to think back and think of what would have been like the first but um i feel like there's this movie it's called uh a house on haunted hill is that a thing is that a movie it is a movie yeah yeah uh i uh i feel like i watched that with my uh sister when i was pretty young and um i think i I did not do really i didn't do well with that movie i went to bed early i didn't i didn't finish the movie what do you remember if it was the original uh, or the remake? The, yeah. oh, was it dude. the 1991? So I was, the original was in the it was in the uh, 50s and it was starring Vincent Price. It was a black and white. I'm gonna look it up because I want to say it was I, I it was probably the remake then. Well, because I, I don't know if you guys have watched the Vincent Price House on Haunted Hill lately, but it still holds up. Like it's still a creepy yeah. ass movie. There's a lot of like jump scares, really early practical effects and like great makeup effects. Uh, it tells a really interesting story. Like I, I love that movie. That's one of my favorite early horror films. It was definitely the remake. So I'll have to watch the original. Yeah, go for sure. The go remake's watch the original. Still really, the remakes. Of, it's one of my favorite remakes of, of a movie. Um, Gregory Rush is fantastic in that film. I love him. Um, oh yeah, I'll have to rewatch them both then. It's I, definitely up there for me. I remember. I don't think I've seen the remake of House, but I, I've seen. I saw the remake of House of Wax with Paris Hilton, and that one was yes, actually pretty also, good. That one was yes, that's really good. up. Um, yeah. Those those uh those early two thousands uh, remakes of classics that all have that like sleek like shine to them everything because it's where they started shooting everything on digital and like Mm -hmm. yeah uh 13 ghosts is like that too right i think um actually uh house of wax and uh house on haunted hill i i believe were still shot in film oh really okay Mm -hmm. Um, you're talking maybe house of house wax was 2005 um Actually, you know what? No, I built that. It was yeah, that was still shot on film because I remember building it. Nice. Um, so yeah. What do you mean um, you built it? So my first job in this world was a movie theater projectionist. So oh, from okay. two thousand four to two thousand six, we were still building films. A digital That's really cool. didn't come along until God, probably twenty. I want to say twenty oh eight, twenty oh nine, twenty ten is when they really started switching oh. over to digital. Okay, Damn. gotcha. That's that's interesting. You can still, I mean, you can go back and and look at uh, these films, and you can like I was just watching Saw Two the other day on Blu-ray, mm-hmm. and you can still tell that that was shot on film because you can still to this day see some of the grain if you look close mm-hmm. enough. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's a uh, that's that's very interesting. I mean, um, you know, I I like those like the, those like early two thousands like horror movies and even the, the the action horror movies. Underworld, I think Underworld gets uh awesome. not nearly Fantastic. enough credit as it deserves. Mm-hmm. Um, the Resident, the early Resident Evil movies, the later Resident Evil movies, not so much, but the earlier ones were first three were actually really great. Uh, I th- they don't follow the video games for shit, but they were fun yeah. action movies. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then like Van Helsing, like you were talking about earlier, Drew. Van Helsing is one mm-hmm. of those that that felt like that. It was a really good movie. Um, I think that the first movie, other than The Exorcist that like made me like wince was the shining and seeing the twins dude. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's not that it's like pop out at you. Scary. It's just uncomfortable. It's unsettling. Mm -hmm. So going back to me being afraid of my stepfather, the shining really did fuck me up a little bit. Um, Hit, hit a little too experience. close to home. <laughs> a little too close to home. Um, but it's still, and yeah, it still didn't uh, really get me. But the, the twins, I get you. The twin, that's scary shit. Like, yeah. yeah. Children uh, children in general in, in horror. Children of the yeah. corn? Yeah, that's children. some scary shit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. People, people oh, like oh. to play off children of corn like it's not scary. And I'm like, there are children murdering people. It is terrifying. <laughs> Blair Witch 2, Book of Shadows. The, the only thing scary about that film is when um, the one girl's getting in the van to leave the convenience store, and she looks back, and the dead children are there. Uh, mm. dead, okay, dead at the end of the day, that does kind of scare me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, children, I don't know what it is about children, but they are they're freaky, man. They, they're, they're, too, they're, they're too innocent, and, and when yeah. they're... Poor, they're portrayed in that light yeah they get all freaky and weird and it's just unsettling yeah uh dead kids in movies are for sure one of the creepiest unsettling things you can come across uh in the shining it was the twins and also the the old hag with her skin Falling off in fourteen oh eight. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. That was that was also probably the first time I saw boobies on screen. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> the old the old saggy boobies. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So it's a wonder that didn't turn me off from women. <laughs> to be honest with you, good God, that was a yeah, disturbing. It was, it was unfortunate. Scene. It was going so well until it started going so bad. <laughs> we, Houston, we have a problem here. <laughs> oh my gosh! So that being said, what what is what is Stephen King's best like book adaptation? And why is it? Oh man! I was gonna say, and why is it Rose Red? <laughs> no, it's Misery. <laughs> Dude, I actually, actually, I have never seen Misery, and I'm reading Misery right now, and then I'm gonna watch the movie, so no, no spoilers, okay? Right, I'll change, I'll change my my answer to Body. Body. I don't think Stand I've seen by that me one. Is, oh, okay. okay, yeah, yeah. Body is the actual title of Stand by Me. So uh, Stand by Me is one of my favorite movies of all time. So I'll go with that. That's that's what uh, Body is the. It's a short story compilation, right? Yeah. So um, Rob decided to change the um, uh, the title of the movie when he heard um, Keith and Sutherland singing "Stand by Me," um, and he decided to change the title to that. Yeah, I think I yeah I think I saw something like he was just walking by him and he's like, "I haven't heard that song in forever." Yeah, him. Uh, I, I, I something about him and River Phoenix were like just singing it together uh, during a break. I was like, oh man, that yeah, I haven't heard that in forever. And then like two weeks later, it's uh the film is now called Stand By Me. And, <laughs> so, and, and I honestly like it. It kind of fits the story pretty well, too. I mean It does, right? Um because oh, if you haven't seen the film, obviously the the, the, the kids find a, a dead body, um, so that's why it's called bodies. But it, but the movie is is yeah about the kids standing together and and mm-hmm. their their bond. So stand by me, it, it, yeah, it fits perfect, and mm-hmm. that's why at the end of the day, Rob Reiner is a genius. <laughs> Have you seen the fun little conspiracy theory about Keith or Sutherland in that movie? Where uh, so it's like. So it's like the last time you see Keith or Sutherland, he's driving to the West Coast 
and he's like at the same exact age he is when he is in, in the Lost Boys. So people like to be like, oh, he like went to the West Coast and became a vampire, and then we see him in the Lost Boys. I always I like that. I think that's fun. I love when people come up with things like that. That makes my day. There is a YouTube channel. I can't remember what it was, but they used to do things like that, how they would connect movies to one another. That's I so cool. It. It's so yeah. fun. Because you're so like, no fun. way, but, you know, maybe, though. Maybe. I mean. <laughs> maybe. It's like, it's- we... We were talking about stuff like that in uh, in live the other night and saying that Die Hard is remember Die Hard is in the Friends universe because Rachel oh, dated yeah. yep. <laughs> dated Bruce Willis. Yeah. <laughs> it's That's also funny. in the you know family members universe and yeah, it's uh, it's crazy that you can con- connect things like that for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what is um, what's like a list of of some horrors? Uh, whether they're made for kids on television or or not, you know, actual horrors. Like, what are the ones the must watches every year uh, that you have mm-hmm. to do? Uh, let's start with Drew. Okay, well, you gotta watch The Lost Boys like five times, and then other than that, um, I usually always go with uh, Halloween Town to even the palette, and then. I watched the original Friday the 13th and then what's another really good one that I usually watch every year. Um, I would say as far as one of the newer ones, I usually watch uh, strangers every Halloween because that's just a genuinely good, scary movie. In my opinion, I like that one a lot. So I would say those are always go to's around that time for me. Is that is strangers? That's the one that's like a home invasion where they're like wearing sacks on their yes. head, shit, right? Yes, yeah, and they just be just be playing with this couple for fun, I guess. I don't know. Did yeah. they never? You never really know why they're there, which <laughs> is awesome. I haven't that's seen that's what one makes those look, movies. Yeah. The first and second stranger what makes what makes those movies so terrifying are the villains because there's no reason they're just. They yeah. even say that in the second film. They're like, uh, just why you know why not basically it's like you were home (laughs) yeah yeah that that honestly that yeah that sentence i hate it it was so scary it's like because you were home like okay well fuck (laughs) yeah when you have a killer that's killing for no reason that's insane like (laughs) freddy has a reason yeah. Uh, Jason has a reason. Pinhead has a reason for trying to take your soul. But the yeah. the, the three people and the strangers, they don't have yeah. a reason. They're just no reason. bored. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a Saturday night, baby. Let's go. <laughs> and, and the strangers, the, the first one, not the second, but the first one is based on a true story. Like, you know, really? Those events really, really happened. So oh, y- you never know. You're sitting at home and all of a sudden three people show up at your house, break in, and just murder you. Like, that's... Yeah. Camera um, is never it's, home. It's, yeah, it's it's based off the uh, Sharon Tate, um, the the Manson murders. Oh, okay, um, okay. How Manson sent them to uh, mm-hmm. invade home. Well, then they had a reason though. They had a reason. They were trying to start the race war. But um, in the strangers, there is no reason, and that makes yeah. it easier. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What about you, Dustin? Uh, movies that you have to watch every October. Uh, uh every well, I have a tradition. Um, so. Every Halloween, I do the exact same thing. This year, it'll, it'll change now because I have a kid. But uh, every Halloween, I make Sloppy Joes for myself. And I either watch the Rocky Horror Picture Show or I try to find a live uh, viewing of it, like the live theater act- theatrical where the people are in front of the screen and stuff like that. Um, so Rocky Horror Picture Show is my go-to every Halloween. Um, but every year, I tend to watch um, – I usually do a whole run-through of the um, – Hellraiser franchise. Uh, I usually do a whole run through the Scream franchise. Um, oh, uh, Scream! Scream's a good one too. Yeah. Um, John Wayne Gacy. It's, it's just called Gacy. I watch that every year. Um, Mark Holden's a really dear friend of mine, and I I love watching him be uh be <laughs> be this crazy yeah. crazy mass serial killer. Um, so yeah, those are probably like my go to horror films every year. Did you like the new Hellraiser? I loved it. L- yeah. Loved it. Hell yeah. Uh, and it's closer to the uh, novella um, than, you know, than a lot of the original stuff. So, yeah, I loved it. Um, nice. Especially, it, it, it's wild. I got to go back and reread it, but I'm pretty sure in the novella, they refer to Pinhead as a female. 
Um, oh, okay. So I thought, oh, that, yeah. was, I thought that was that was really cool. Um, but loved it, loved it. And I really wish nice. it would come to physical media. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's a couple. There, um, there's a couple things that I'm really just begging for, as well. With uh, with the every, announcement that Prey year. is coming, well, I would say we'll probably get Hellraiser oh, eventually. Yeah, maybe. Shit, maybe. I want to. I want to rephrase that. I watched the first four Hellraiser movies every year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is my favorite franchise, but I will admit that after the after Bloodline, they get real bad <laughs> which which one is the one where they go to space uh that's bloodline that okay they do, yeah they do go to so, space. so that's i love that because that's your line was that that's your line then going to space yeah, that, and then end it <laughs> yeah well then making a the cube in space that that was too cool um but like hellraiser deader is one of the worst films ever made. <laughs> like, I, I cannot watch that film. It's so bad. Um, Judgment, the newer ones, um, when they took away Doug and mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the one guy. Yeah, just they're just really bad. Um, with those, those first four, with those I movies, mean, didn't they? Didn't they just keep making them so they could hold on to the IP? Yes, yes, and it, uh, it, it yeah. Uh, you can tell too. Hell World, Deader, Inferno. There, well, Inferno's actually not all that bad, but um, they, but yeah, they they are so bad, so bad. How many um, are there total? Oh, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. I want to say with the newest one, there's like ten altogether. Damn, I did not um, know there was that many. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh! I also tend to watch the first um, like six Puppet Master movies every year too. Um, oh, which is yeah, insane yeah. that nobody talks about Puppet Master anymore. Those movies are fantastic. Uh, um, the first, the first three are the only ones I've seen. Um, that was my first introduction of Charles Band. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and those were those. Uh, speaking of watching stuff as a child, um, uh, yeah, the first uh, two Puppet Master movies are my aunt's one of my aunt's favorites, and she babysit. We watch those all the time. There were a few movies like it depending if you went into those mom and pop VHS stores or the like the gas station that had VHS tapes. No joke, dolls, puppet master, those films would be in the children's section because they didn't. <laughs> they know. didn't. Yeah, they're just like ah, seems <laughs> seems friendly enough. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like there's there's toys. The one movie's called Dolls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I watched Dolls for the first time the other day. Uh, I watched oh, it. What did you think of it? I, I watched uh, the Dungeon Master and Dolls out of the uh, Arrow video. Enter the oh, video. Enter the video. Enter the video. Yeah. Enter the video um, and I fucking loved it. I thought it was excellent. Like oh, yeah. it, it, the practical effects and like the claymation they used to bring the dolls to life in that or stop motion is fucking S tier, dude. It's so good. I loved it. Can't go over stop motion. That's what it was back in the same with uh, Puppet Masters. That's all stop motion and stuff. So yeah, yeah it's amazing. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, love it. Um, so movies that I gotta watch every year. I, I've got a I've got a list. Uh, Lost Boys. So I definitely agree with you, Drew. Gotta watch it yes. probably ten to twenty times. Um, yes. but the, but Lost Boys is also a movie that I'll watch year round. Like I'll I'll have that on yes. all the time. Uh, have you guys seen Trick or Treat? Yeah, I saw it once. Uh, the anthology. I fucking love that movie. It is so fun. Uh, Sam Hain is one of the best little tiny killers ever. Uh, Sam could kill Chucky in a fight, 100%. Um, let's see, The Crow. Uh, I've been ooh, dying ooh. for a 4K of The Crow so bad. Um, Halloween 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Uh, I don't fuck with anything past five. Michael J. Fox and the Frighteners. You guys ever seen that one? Yes, love it. I uh, that I movie, dude. Add it to your list. I it's will. a I'm it's doing a it right now. it's a comedy. It's kind of like Casper, but a little more adult. Okay. Like and uh, then uh, American Werewolf in London, Donnie Darko, and Fright Night. The first, the original Fright Night. Those are all Not ones. The awful, Colin Farrell remake yeah no fuck that movie <laughs> <laughs> those are all movies that i i have to watch every october um 
And if I have time, I'll do Rocky Horror as well. But sometimes that one ends up getting bumped, unfortunately. Um, and sometimes Night of the Living Dead original. Oh, that's another good one. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. I but, forgot to mention Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is a must see for me oh, as well for yes. October. Say it one more time. One. Say it. Say it. Say it. Beetlejuice. It's showtime. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a fantastic movie. Yeah, a lot of uh, Tim Burton's movies are, are really good to to watch around October. Mm. Edward Scissorhands, yes. Yeah, no, is, that yeah. a, is that a Halloween movie? It's not really Halloween. No, it's actually probably closer to Christmas because it's like snowy yeah, and stuff. Christmas, yeah. Um, so I guess now, now here's the real question: Are we watching Nightmare Before Christmas on Halloween and Christmas, or just Halloween or just Christmas? It's where either. Guys, where do you guys lie? Either or or both. Whatever you want to do, just don't just don't watch, watch it in that. the summer. <laughs> I tend to watch that more towards Christmas because I like to I like to drag the horror as long as possible. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> it blows my mind when people are like, "I watch that at Halloween." Well, then what do you watch at Christmas? <laughs> yeah, it's the perfect it's the perfect Christmas horror movie. Like you're doing yourself a disservice. I mean, Krampus, Black Christmas. Yeah. you know violent night i think they might disagree but <laughs> violent night's pretty fire too oh violent night that's a new one we get to add to the list this yeah yeah that's a good one. Yeah. yeah put it in the rotation yeah well yeah. we'll we'll have another episode on christmas themed uh movies coming around december probably um but for now i think that's probably the episode unless you boys had anything else to add yeah, I mean, if you are listening and you want a good film recommendation, a film that a horror film that you can watch with your children, um, go watch Troll Two. Okay, it's a family film. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but be like, how is Troll Two a little fewer a horror movie? You're watching the wrong movie. You're the, yeah, yeah, Troll. troll. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> whatever oh chance you God. get you're gonna whatever chance you get you're gonna promote that movie aren't you dustin i am i love troll too. <laughs> dustin will promote dustin troll Timberlake is in troll too right <laughs> what, what's that i said justin timberlake is in troll too right <laughs> again you're watching the wrong troll movie <laughs> oh okay <laughs> Just the picture alone that popped up for Troll 2 is just <laughs> scary. I don't want to watch that movie. Oh my God. What so, the hell? Practical it's effects are next level. Terrifying. Oh my God. Why is this RV like that? RV corn scene is insane. <laughs> I'm going to watch this, honestly. You will. I'm, you I'm will looking do I need just... to watch the first one to watch the second oh, one? Oh, that's the cool thing. They have nothing to do with one another. Okay, bad. I'm in there. He just used the title to so they could get the, uh, you know, the, the basically the success of the first one. <laughs> <laughs> What's also oh, my like God. Uh, Dustin. Uh, let them know where they can find you and uh, let them know about your little bit about your own podcast that you host. All right, you can find me on TikTok at Nerdy Dustin 2.0. You can find me on Instagram at Nerdy Dustin, Letterbox Nerdy Dustin. Uh, you can check out my IMBD, Dustin Vitali, to see uh, all my fantastic films. Um, and uh, yeah, you can find uh, my podcast, Movies After Dark. It's currently on Spotify, our iHeartRadio, and Google Podcasts. What what do you guys do on Movies After Dark? What's the, the premise of the show? Uh, every week we just pick the most random movie and we watch it and we talk about it. So like uh, this week's episode we did They Live, which is a John Carpenter uh, 1988 masterpiece. Nice. Uh, and it's just, uh, it's it's me, OTS Movies and Movies of Leo. And we just, yeah, we just bullshit about the movie. It's really great. It's really fun. Oh, yeah. For those listening along at home, that episode is actually going to be from back in August because as the audience is listening to this, it's probably going to be in October itself. So, um, still go oh, to but it. yeah, <laughs> still go listen to it. Yeah, still it go, still, still go do it. Still go do it. Uh, it's a, it's a fun show, <laughs> even though uh, it competes with Masters of Matinee. <clears throat> um, it's a, it's a no, fun show. 
Uh, I I yeah. was in I was I was they they they've started doing uh some live recordings of it on TikTok too, which I think is an interesting idea as well. Um, so yeah. y'all go make sure to follow Dustin, Leo, Stephen, and uh, who knows maybe you'll go join in on one of their lives and get your questions answered on their show. Uh, Drewski, pimp yourself out. Oh, I only have I only have one place to go. That's Drewby Doobie's movies at TikTok, and I will be there. Rain or shine. <laughs> he'll he'll be there for you. for you when the rain starts to pour. All we'll right. Be collecting the movies. All right. Say goodnight, everybody. Good night. Night. Hey, floating head. It's talking head. You know what? It, it doesn't matter. Whatever. It's time for you to do the outro. Oh, no. You're the one that bursts in here demanding to take over the airwaves. You've got to do it. Besides, you're getting better at it. Well, okay. Uh, let me try. <clears throat> uh, thank you for watching this week's episode of Masters of Matinee. Go on. Uh, if you enjoyed it, then like, comment, and subscribe. Or die. I don't really care which. Lobo. Sorry, sorry. Uh, if you want to follow our guest, Nerdy Dustin... He can be found at Movies with Nerdy Dustin on his Tic Tac. What, what is your obsession with breath mints? Is that a sponsor or something? No, not a sponsor. But you could use one. Yeah. And, and follow Drew and the other masters, too. And where can they get the information to follow us? In the link in the description. In the link in the description. Hey, I am getting pretty good at this. Uh, stay tuned for next week's episode where we're going to have a really interesting interview with the brothers behind one of the wildest, most demented shot on video horror flicks ever made. Oh, and uh, we're also going to reveal a new master. Uh, anything you wanted to say, Floating Head? Just, um, I've been trapped here with this lunatic for three weeks. Please, someone send help. Call the cops. I, I don't know, dude. I'll see you next week. Wait, just you? Maybe.